Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Did you guys see that story about DHS now that plans on indefinitely detaining citizen journalists that don't tell the truth? Do you suppose they're talking about mainstream media? Or do you suppose that they're going to incriminate those that speak the truth and say that it was a lie? I mean, you guys, we can't even make this stuff up. Anyway, the vi this video was called Middleton, Calling Middleton Residents Clean Up on Aisle 5. It's my best attempt at being humorous today as we suffer from a huge issue. Uh, kudos to Nate Shellman yesterday uh, for spending three hours on uh, exposing Middleton High School, or in other words, Middleton Prison System. Something that I've been fighting with for over five years. Praying to God. I know, my son's still in there. I don't want to hear about it, okay? He's still got two years left. <laughs> I don't think he's going to make it that far. Or they'll probably incarcerate him by that or not let him out. But we've been struggling with tremendous issues. And the reason why it's called Clean Up on Aisle 5 is for obvious reasons. Is that government, especially in this town, believe it or not, has done a great job... Um, deceiving people into supporting these bond levies to be able to further their tyranny on their citizens. And what I've done is trying to be able to wake this sleepy town up and get people to understand exactly how abusive these people are because they have no, they have no understanding about limitations on authority. This place thinks that it can write policy and somehow it's law. Do you know the irony behind that? They have a county SRO, I've met him, he's a good guy, and he enforces Middleton's policy. Now, as I understand it, law enforcement are law enforcement officers. So can an SRO, a county sheriff, actually enforce school policy upon the citizen and the parents. Now, it's quite another thing to be able to create policy uh, and, to, to, uh, and have people adhere to it, and that would be for the agency that actually created it, for those particular people. So the policy is basically to be able to streamline um, the way the school functions within its administration. So if they say you have to work six work days, you know, six workday weeks or, you know, six days a week, and that's a policy, does that apply to the students? No. So there's differentiation there, right? So they've taken this policy and they think somehow they, they can make, they can have full force and effective law. Well, I disagree and I think that the Attorney General Lawrence Wasden disagrees when I had to sit down with him and he said the biggest problem in this state, Tom, is that people believe that policy is law. You've heard me say that before, I'm just regurgitating it again. So he, my, my son, he sends me a video, and he tells me they have this advisory class, right? It's just an evolutionary, ever-changing class that doesn't really have any basis of anything. And they just try to put somebody in there, an instructor that they pay, and then we pay their, their salary and their retirement and benefits for life on the back of the taxpayer, right? So this particular week, they spent the last week studying the student handbook. Now, I didn't read the student handbook yet, but my, de my son did find something rather interesting, and he did share it with me, and it says, true or false, any and all administration, something like that, have the authority upon probable cause to be able to search your stuff. Well, I'm glad that he circled true, because he probably would have gotten in trouble if he didn't. But does any administrator have law enforcement authority now? And just what the hell is going on in that school to be able to allow teachers to have law enforcement authority? Every agency that's been created by government now has law enforcement authority? And they're calling us extreme. How does that even work? In Middleton, whether you know it or not, they, lock the, they, they have a gate that they lock the cars in during business hours. Isn't there a law somewhere stating that the that, 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 uh, that businesses have to have their uh, 
their doors open during business hours? And why all of a sudden is it okay for them to be able to close the gate to where students can't get out unless they go through the little squirrel cage in the front of the school that's monitored by about 50 surveillance cameras? Oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you, they've, they've created a policy that restricts your child from even going out to their car at break. Now I'm going to ask you, isn't that sort of like you're guilty until you're proven innocent? And if they're teaching our children to be responsible students, then why do they lock them down for 12 years, like they're clipping their wings, and then open the floodgates on, on, on uh, their senior year, expecting them to be successful? And then they force our children to be able to sign acknowledgments like to that they've read the handbook. They are under the age of consent until 18 years old. That means their signatures don't mean anything, so why are they having to sign them? I would, I would suggest it's probably data connection through their P20W program that's a federal mandated garbage thing, part of Common Core that's not really a federal program because it's state standards. And then, they t and then you have to study the handbook for advisory class and then take a quiz that doesn't even get graded. What's the point of that? To be able to teach them they're slaves? And what about all the data collection? Now they've got a PE program where they're going to be able to monitor the, the, your nutrition and what you eat. Because it's a, it's a program that was launched by Michelle Obama. Anybody seen her lately? She could lose a few pounds. And besides that, where does the constitutional authority to be able to allow the first lady to be able to dictator, dictate lunch for school districts? I don't see that anywhere in the Constitution. Like we had one. You know, the ones that law enforcement swears to uphold and our elected officials swear to uphold? They spend every moment trying to figure out a way to be able to generate more money for their school. And they restrict every right of every child that is in that school, and they're going to continue to do so until the citizens wake up. Don't even get me started on, manda on mandated drug tests for sports. And you might think that that's okay, except for the fact that you probably don't understand that Sports and school are actually separated. And as I understand it, according to Title 33, that's why you have to pay for sports is because it's not part of the school. But yet they wear the school colors and they represent the school and the school has the authority to mandate drug tests. And the IHSAA, which is the rules that, that, that the kids have to play by, is a private, uh, is a private nonprofit that is now in cahoots with the taxpayer-funded public school which is a public-private partnership, which calls into question what form of government are they under now. So we have a, we have a mess, we have a cleanup needed on aisle five, which is Middleton, Idaho. And, we need, and this call is to be able to reach out to everybody in Middleton and say that we are meeting and we are starting to band together as the school tries to keep us separated. On September 19th, Saturday at 8 o'clock in the morning at sunrise. If you guys live in Star, you live in Middleton, you live anywhere close by, or you want to attend because you're in Boise, because you want to know what's going on, please come out to Middleton and join us. We've got hell going on out here in this small, sleepy town, and they just voted to pass another bond like good little Marxists. Or ignorant, sleepy sheep, or people that are just working four jobs. They just can't stand the continual pushback, the continual assault. So let's get together, Middleton, surrounding areas. We've got to do something about this. You know, I think Middleton's got a funky connection with the feds. Um, I think they're a pilot school. Um, you know, they get all of these awards. You know, one can only wonder. And the, um, the school is trying to keep us separated uh, from meeting together. And uh, they don't have that authority. And we need to make sure that we show up in, uh, in unity on this. So, calling all you guys out there, September, Saturday, 19th, 8 o'clock in the morning, sunrise. Hope you're there. Thanks, guys. Love you. Bye.